Nema problema. saintly son of the Irani Kashipu. We have 36 with no purport and then 37. Okay, which one should we do? 36? 
Okay. Vishnu Vasara so Kim Nu. Saridam Dushya Jampitor Ahadiyat Pancha Hayanaha Vishnurva Saraso Kimnu Vishnurva Saraso Kimnu Kadeshya Saridam Dushya Jampitur Ahadya Pancha Hayanaha Vishnu Vasara So Kimnu Karishya Yasam Manjasaha Saridam Dushya Jampitur Ahadiyat Panchahayana Vishnu, unto Vishnu, va, either, sadhu, good, aso, this, kim, whether, nu, indeed, kirishyati, will do, asam manjasaha, not trustworthy, so ridam, Affectionate relationship. Dushya jam. Difficult to relinquish. Pitor of his father and mother. Ahat gave up. Ya he who. Panchahayanaha. Only five years old. So Parani Kashipu is speaking here. Although Prahlad is only five years old, even at this young age he has given up his affection relationship with his father and mother. Therefore he is certainly untrustworthy. Indeed, it is not at all believable that he will behave well towards Vishnu. So the next translation and purport. Although a medicinal herb being born in the forest does not belong to the same category as a man, if beneficial, it is kept very carefully. Similar, if someone outside of one's family is favorable, he should be given protection like a son. 
On the other hand, if a limb of one's body is poisoned by disease, it must be amputated so that the rest of the body may live happily. Similarly, even one's own son, if unfavorable, must be rejected, although born of one's own body. Wow, okay. <clears throat> Very philosophical expression of correct knowledge, actually. Purport. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has instructed all devotees of the Lord to be humbler than the grass and more tolerant than the trees. Otherwise, there will always be disturbances to their execution of devotional service. Here is a vivid example of how a devotee is disturbed by a non-devotee, even though the non-devotee is an affectionate father. The material world is such that a non-devotee becomes non-devotee father becomes an enemy of the devotee's son. Having determined to kill even his son, Rani Kashipu gave the example of amputating a part of one's own body that has become septic and therefore injurious to the rest of the body. The same example, of course, may be also applied to non-devotees. Chanakapan advises Dr. Tatvajya Dorjanam Samsagam Vajasaru Samagamam. Devotees actually serious about advancing in spiritual life should give up the company of non devotees and always keep company with devotees. To be too attached to material existence is ignorance because material existence is temporary and miserable. Therefore, devotees who are determined to perform tapasya, penances and austerities to realize the self and who are determined to become advanced in spiritual consciousness must give up the company of atheistic non-devotees. Prahlad Maharaj maintained an attitude of non-cooperation with the, with the philosophy of his father, Rani Kashipu, yet he was tolerant and humble. Rani Kashipu, however, being a non-devotee, was so polluted that he was even prepared to kill his own son he justified this by putting forward the logic of amputation. Om again, Timirandasya, Ginajana Salakaya, Chaksu Unmilitam Yena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stampitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kudam Mayam, Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale, Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pucharine, Nirvishesha Sunyavadi, Pastyatya De Sitarine, Panchakalpa, Tarupischa, Kripa, Sindupe, Vicha, Patita Nam Pavane Bio, Vaishnave Bio, Namaho Namaha, Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Rinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. A few times, maybe even actually many times, Prabhupada would say, the demons, they will do anything. When he made that point by emphasizing that statement over, they will do anything. There's no limit to what the demons will do to fulfill their own selfish interests. They'll kill their father, they'll kill their mother, they'll kill everybody. That is their nature. So it's not surprising when we hear about uh, this example here, Rani Kashipu is even prepared to kill his own very affectionate and very, what we say, concerned son, concerned for the welfare of his father. Still, and this is the nature of the demonic. Just like we can understand that in spiritual life, there's no limit how much you can become Krishna conscious. So in material life, there's no limit how much you can become degraded. You can go to the lowest regions of hell and go lower yet <laughs> in terms of your consciousness and your actual existence. So the demons, uh, those are actually demons, you know, they, they have no, you know, the 16th chapter is very nicely described. It's interesting, that chapter, the first three verses deal only with the qualities of the devotees and the rest of the chapter 
to give us a really clear information and knowledge of what a demon is. Verse after verse, Krishna speaks, you know, the qualities, characteristics, activities of the demons. They're always plotting to get more. They're always plotting to destroy their, what we say, designated enemies. Like that. And they'll do anything. I mean, like a devotee, if he steps on an ant or he accidentally kills an insect or some devotee feels bad. <laughs> oh, this is the nature of a devotee. They're very soft in heart, and if they cause, cause any injury or even death to a living entity, they, they sincerely regret it and repent. But a demon will kill their own parents and feel good about it. This is so a devotee cannot imagine what it's like to be a demon, nor can a demon be imagine what it's like to be a devotee. There's such opposites in nature that there's practically no similarities at all. There is no similarities at all. So we're getting a little bit of insight of the nature of demoniac consciousness here with Hirani Kashipu. And he's, he wants to be very philosophical about it. He wants to express it in such a way that it sounds very logical to the rest of his demons. That, uh, and to everyone else, that, you know, that if someone, you know, if someone is unfavorable, you know, to one's interest, it'll put, it could destroy one, one person themselves. So in order for self-preservation is the first principle of existence. Therefore, one has to cut off that limb of course, how the demons do it, that's another thing. But this is a this is a demonic mentality. And Prabhupada, you know, makes the point that association is very, very fundamental to the execution of Krishna consciousness. Uh, this is how devotees leave Krishna consciousness. Sometimes you understand how devotees leave. Actually, it starts with offenses. When we offend Vaishnavas, we start losing a little bit of that taste in Krishna consciousness. And because we are offending Vaishnavas, it becomes hard to associate with Vaishnavas. And because the nature of the living entity is to associate with other living entities, well, sometimes we look for association outside of Vaishnavas. And then that process of falling down starts from there. One falls down farther and farther. Therefore, when Lord Chaitanya wanted to make a point, when Sanatana Goswami asked him, what is the first business of a Vaishnava? He said, asat sangha teaga e Vaishnava achar. That one should give up the association of non-devotees and accept the association of devotees. Not just one side or both, but both, in other words, giving up and accepting the association of devotees. Because association is such an important part of the whole process of spiritual advancement that it resonates as the basis of everything we do. Uh, sometimes we use the statement, and it's also used in a general sense, uh, tell me who you associate with and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who you associate with, and I'll tell you who you are. So we want to associate with Krishna and Krishna's devotees. And by associating with Krishna's devotees, we can associate with Krishna more and more. And that's how the process goes. Therefore, one should be very diligent in seeking out the association of devotees and act in an association. But the opposite is also true. Although non-devotees may appear to have nice qualities, and we, sometimes we see that, sometimes they even exhibit nicer qualities than the devotees. But still, what is their nature? It's all self-interested. They're thinking only about themselves. Bhakti Vinod Thakur talks about the moral, what is it called, the moral, the moral, in other words, the, the perfect moralist. He, he wants to be so moral, he follows all principles of morality as given in uh, what we say social etiquette and follows that very nicely. Why? 
because it is good business. <laughs> it's good business. So the non-devotees are nice because it's good for their interest. <laughs> devotee is nice, or devotee develops nice qualities because it's, uh, it's the way to advance in devotional service. It's a way to attract the association of Krishna, and it's also a way to interact with other devotees. So devotees do it as a way to advance in Krishna consciousness. And of course, by nature, the soul is full of good qualities. So when we practice the good, the good qualities, as mentioned in the first three verses of the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, those qualities there are mentioned nicely, and I think there's about 20, some of them, I don't know how many, 25 or 26 different qualities. And of course, the 20, 26 qualities of the Vaishnava mentioned in the Bhagavatam also kind of parallels those same qualities. Then uh, those qualities are natural because that's the nature of the soul. So when we're exhibiting something that is not of those qualities, we're exhibiting our material consciousness. But the non-devotees, they do it in order to gain something material, or to be known as a nice guy, to get some recognition, or something. It's nice, just like, I don't want to say this, but I will. <laughs> this is for the ladies, be careful ladies. Men will be nice to you because they want to get something from you. Be careful. I think ladies know this, okay. So ladies, you know, men use this nice idea to get the uh, attention and the affection of ladies, and then they exploit them for their own selfish interests. That goes on all the time. Men know that. They know that trick. How, if you want to attract a lady, just be nice to her. Be kind, be sweet, be friendly, and do things for her. And then when she gets your confidence, then you can jump around and act like a monkey after that. So, yeah, that's, you know, so this idea of being nice, you have to be careful. Just, you know, write that down. <laughs> so this is how men use women. They do it in that way. Because their whole idea is to exploit ladies anyway. And ladies are, they have, they're susceptible to nice people. If you want to get the confidence of a woman, just be really nice to her. And she'll open up her heart generally. That's how it works. Because that's their nature. But some ladies have been through that, so they they got the guard up, so they know there's another rascal trying to get in, you know. <laughs> so this is a little psychology we can, you know, keep in mind. But that's again, this is how the non-devotees exploit others by using various things that look so nice from the external point of view. I mean, even Ran Harani Kashibu. He's nice when he when it, when it's beneficial to him, but but that's not his nature. That's not his nature. It's just you know good business like that. So we find that you know here, but Prahlad Maharaj, you know, he understands his father. He knows he's a big demon, <laughs> but the point he's not afraid, and therefore Prabhupada uses the word non cooperation with the philosophy of his father. Yet, he wasn't defiant. He was humble and he was tolerant. He never gave up his Vaishnav qualities in order to protect himself or to attempt to protect himself. He always maintained those qualities of a Vaishnava because he, he understood that these qualities are actually part of my devotion to Krishna. And so they are natural for, for a person like Prahlad Maharaj. So that he exhibits that in any situation. So devotees are also like that. But sometimes a devotee can act very strongly in situations if it's needed to be. They can act very powerfully. You know, just like, you know. Uh, sometimes Prabhupada would get really, really strong and angry like, you know, he would make Harani, he would make Nishringadev look like a, a pussycat sometimes. Prabhupada would get so angry. <laughs> but the next minute he could turn it off and it's like it never happened. It was like, did it happen? Huh? And he would use his anger in order to teach or to correct or to make a point. 
but it was never, he was controlled by the anger. So sometimes devotees use negative qualities apparent, like anger or what else they might use. They act a little proud sometimes in order to make a point. But it's only done for the benefit of others or for the execution of a particular service like that. But the non-devotees, they glorify these, what we say, anarthas as ways to get whatever they want in, in their life. So here, these, uh, these points are very, very important. And uh, as no, no matter how philosophical or how sweet Rani Kashipu is, you can even see that, you saw that in King Kamsa. When Kamsa was uh, lamenting after he tried to kill the eighth son of uh, Devaki, and he found that it was a girl, and that girl turned into yoga maya, and she flew up into the sky and charted the chastise. Kamsa for being the rascal and the fool. And then, uh, then he realized, oh, you know, like, well, that eighth son is not the eighth son, as I thought. And then he started apologizing to Devaki and Vasudev for all the atrocities he committed to them. And he asked their forgiveness, although he killed six of their sons. But then again, you know, when he was back with his associates, the other demons, what did he do? He was on the rampage again. So sometimes these demons may show sometimes some little sentiment that looks very nice, but never trust. Therefore they say never trust anyone unless it's a pure devotee. Can we trust each other if we're not pure devotees? Good discussion question. <laughs> they say, unless a person is a pure devotee, you can't have complete trust because that material tinge may also enter into that relationship and something else will go wrong. So anyway, but that's, that's the principle of trust. But we can give our trust to the devotees and know that uh, ultimately the devotees are always, so what we say, well-intentioned. <laughs> And that's the point. Devotees always have the best intentions. Okay, so any questions, comments, Maharaj? Yes. You said that you, someone can be trusted. Soda sends Kundalata, who's a relative of Krishna, to bring Shmati Rarani to cook for Krishna at uh, Nandagram. And then J J uh, Jatila is very concerned because she knows that Krishna is always after her daughter, Shmati Rarani. So she doesn't, she's torn because she heard from. Uh, Purnamasi, that she should always obey the orders of Jasoda. At the same time, she doesn't want her daughter to get entangled with Krishna. So Kundalata says to Mother Jasoda, don't worry, I'll look after her so that even Krishna's shadow won't even touch Shimata Radharani. So out of faith of Kundalata, then Jatila says, all right, I, I, if you look after Radharani, I, I have faith in you. And then Kundalata tricks her. <laughs> <laughs> and then Radharani and Krishna can be together, right? Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kundalata is a completely pure devotee, but... I mean, Krishna has a crooked cane, you can't trust him either. <laughs> he says, devotee. I'm not going to fight, he fights, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who can you trust then? <laughs> <laughs> you have to go back to the spiritual world to get the ideal situation. <laughs> but that is the spiritual world. <laughs> <laughs> but that kind of mistrust only increases loving sentiments. So that, that's the positive result. You know, these are, you know, this is yoga maya. Yeah, this is yoga maya is making somebody nicer. And I thank you for that, the room arrangement. So yeah, that there is apparently what we say, 
lying and cheating and enviousness even in the spiritual world, but it's all for the pleasure of Radha and Krishna. <laughs> but don't try to imitate that. <laughs> You, you can't imitate that unless you are, you know, on that pure consciousness. Anything else? Any other comments or questions? Yes, uh, microphone is somewhere. Uh, Hare Krishna, thank you for a nice lecture. Uh, but, uh, uh, we have some another experience that Mataji uh, have a bad uh, experience uh, in Krishna consciousness too with uh, devotees. We had a bad experience uh, in Krishna consciousness with relationship with. Uh, well, these are well, unless the devotees are pure, there's always going to be some what we say inhibitors mistakes. That's why there's four principles of the conditioned soul. It has it imperfect senses, tends to be illusioned, uh, makes mistakes, and has a cheating propensity. So as long as a person is still within the material consciousness, these are one or more of these propensities is still there, to some degree, depending on the person. Only the pure devotee is free from these four defects, four material defects. Mm -hmm. They have to be careful. Yeah, you know, you have to, well, you know, we sometimes we take a chance because we know these are devotees, but then at the same time, we shouldn't take a chance that if something goes wrong, we are, we're at a great loss. Like, you know, I'll ask someone, to do something for me, and they don't do it. <laughs> it happens all the time, anyway. <laughs> and they all say yes at the beginning. <laughs> oh yes, Maharaj, I have so much time, I'll be happy to do that. Two years later, I'm still working on it. <laughs> so, and so I have a default program, <laughs> so I try to somehow or other have a backup in case they don't finish <laughs> or find somebody else or not don't give them something that is so important that i have to have it right away yeah. so we sometimes we do trust people and we get a little disappointed with them but make sure it doesn't cause any you know any you know real difficulties in the relationship Mm -hmm. Just like people go, you know, like the initiation ceremony is so, uh, people say, oh, I'm getting initiated. Oh, chant for 16 rounds. Yes, Maharaj, for sure. I will chant 16 rounds and I'll follow those four regulative principles even when I'm sleeping. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm just going to be such a nice devotee. <laughs> Don't worry about me. And then two years, you know, how many rounds you chant? You know, I don't have so much time. I got this business deal that I'm working on. And, uh, I'm chanting almost 16, getting, you know, I'm getting back there. <laughs> Four regulative principles, no eating meat, fish, eggs, or drinking coffee and tea. You know, I'm fine with five regulative principles. <laughs> So there was this, an exchange between Prabhupada and one devotee. Just recently I heard and one devotee had come back after being away from one. And he said to Prabhupada, he said, you know, when I got initiated, it was different. But I can't, if things have changed now, Srila Prabhupada, and Prabhupada slammed his fist on the desk and said, why did you promise? And then, of course, the point was made that there is a promise and there's a vow. Promise sometimes to, because of situations. We might find it difficult to keep the promise, but of course that should be made known ahead of time. But a vow, you can't break. Vows cannot be broken. 
vows are, are statements of absolute truth. So that's why we say initiation vows. So one who takes it, because we see, you know, everybody's so fired up at initiation. <laughs> They're all smiling and it's like I'm entering the spiritual world. I'm so happy. And then later on, after a couple of years, where did she go? Well, she's there in, uh, you know, down the street, sitting in a cafe, drinking coffee with her old friends again. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's like, what happened? So that's why Prabhupada said, you know, don't promise unless you can keep it. <laughs> that's why initiation is such an important part of the whole process, because it really co causes us to become serious in Krishna consciousness. If we're not serious, then there's some nice reactions. So I just wanted to make that point, that when we promise something, conditions may cause the promise to break, but when you make a vow, you don't break that. <laughs> difference between vows and promises. Yeah, so trusting devotees, you have to use your intelligence, your discretion, and sometimes you take a chance just because it is proper etiquette to do that. But make sure you don't put yourself in a dangerous situation. That causes that if it doesn't if it doesn't work out, there's a great fallout. Something horrible will happen. Like that. Because there are circumstances that do come up, which causes something to be more beneficial than the original promise, and so that should be communicated. So just to keep the relationship clear. Well, you gave me something to do, but this is what the situation is. I can't do it, so can you please uh, uh, give me more time, or maybe uh, I apologize, or something like that. But that's, that's just social etiquette. Any other questions, comments? Yes. Maharaj, this situation between Hirana Kashipu being the demon and Prahlad Maharaj being a devotee is quite interesting. So, um, what's the healthy line, like a golden middle, between selfishness and selflessness? Self selfishness and selflessness? Yes. Well, selfish. Mm. It really pertains to the body and the mind, the senses. Selflessness is a high principle that comes rarely to people in the material world. It's very rarely found. Well, sometimes you find that. that they're, but their selflessness is actually a little bit of selfishness because in their selflessness, they want something. Just like a person sometimes will even give up their own life in order to be known as a famous hero. <laughs> this idea of fame is so strong in the living entity that sometimes people will even sacrifice their life in order to become famous. Although they're not around to <laughs> hear about it. <laughs> it's like that. Or, but then we also have to recognize that sometimes there is this feeling of selflessness towards another person and willing to do anything to help that person, save that person. And you find that's natural. But that's rare. That does happen in the material world. People are, can be like that. There was a story where this one boy and girl, they were boyfriend and girlfriend, and they were walking on the railroad tracks and uh, they didn't hear the train coming. The train was coming quite fast. <clears throat> Finally, at the last minute, the boy recognized that there was a train about to hit them. 
So he pushed the girl as hard as he could to get her out of the way, and he died, and he got hit in the train. So he saved her life, and then he sacrificed his life to save her life. He could have just ran, and she would have been killed, but he, he, he saved her. So you find that sometimes, that people actually show that kind of love for others. You know. Well, that's, that's a sense of self, selflessness. That's a good quality. It's also the quality of bhakti. When, when a devotee sacrifices everything in order to, to uh, do good to the conditioned souls. And that's the mood of preaching. Yeah, and you find there are devotees who are, exhibit that selfless mood. They will do whatever is necessary to spread Krishna consciousness and to please Srila Prabhupada. They have no personal ambition. Okay, so, oh, oh yeah, that, one more question. We do have some time, still 12 minutes to. Okay, last question now. Okay. Hare yeah. Krishna. See, that's what you need to do. You have to say Hare Krishna, and then it works. Mm -hmm. It's a devotee microphone you have to. she was thrown out so I, I really wasn't I was angry I wasn't prepared to do it but then uh, I thought okay this is some kind of, some Krishna's arrangement I'm going I'm going to do it for Krishna and Krishna alone and I went and helped her so to me it seems like uh, that's the the only thing when, when I at least I can be like uh, moral or selfless the, do it for Krishna because is this the uh, what is usually said that that all the good qualities come from surrender or from uh, as, is this yeah. like that? So yeah. That, uh, well, Prabhupada, Prabhupada talks about how when he was in New York City that sometimes people would be attacked on the streets and another person would not come to their defense. They would just walk by and the person would be you know, abused or killed without anybody helping them. Prabhupada really condemned that because it's the nature of a, of a person to want to help another person in trouble. And that's just, that's human nature. And if that's not there, then there's something wrong with that, that person. I didn't want to help her. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but that was... And I have heard some compassion, but well, you did it, so that's what counts. So whether you did it angry or unangry, you did it. <laughs> because you, you ultimately your Krishna consciousness or your concern for another person came through. It's good. It's nice. How did you feel after you did it? Good. <laughs> <laughs> So there's the answer. <laughs> okay, that's just human nature to want to help another person in need. Like that. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Panchatatma ki jai.